Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is new release review where I give you my thoughts about the brand new releases. Are they worth your time? But most importantly, are they worth your money? So I'm starting off with another brand new 4K from Paramount. It is Anchorman. Now, when it comes to Will Ferrell, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you already know that when it comes to Will Ferrell, he's not my go-to comedian. I either can take him or leave him. Either I really love his movies or I could care less. I think my favorite Will Ferrell film is Elf. I just think he's so funny in that movie. He's perfectly cast. Pretty much it's perfect. And other movies, I'm like, yeah, I don't need to see that. I'm okay. So I kind of run hot and cold when it comes to Will Ferrell. And that's probably the reason why I have not revisited Anchorman in over a decade. And the last time I did see this movie, and I've only seen the film two, maybe three times in my entire life, that's it. But the last time I saw it, I do have the memory of, eh, it's all right, you know, it's okay, take it or leave it, you know, whatever, it's, it's no big thing. So when the 4K announcement came for this, I was like, okay, all right, we're going to give Anchorman another shot. Okay, so when this came over from Paramount, I was looking forward to checking it out. Obviously, the 4K transfer and everything. And I was curious to see whether my feelings about this movie were going to change. And I am pleasantly surprised to report that when I put the movie in pretty much from the beginning to the end, I was laughing the entire time. Now, I'm not saying that the movie is absolutely perfect. There's just little moments here and there throughout the film that I wish they kind of would have just eliminated and taken out because I felt like it was a running problem throughout the movie. And this has something to do with the screenwriting itself. It seems like that three or four times in the movie, they would have an awesome comedic moment that was just so funny. And then for some reason, they would follow it up with a very awkward moment. And I don't really know the reason why they chose to do that, but it kind of just like interrupted that golden moment that they just had with something that was not necessary. So that was like my major complaint, but that's it. If that's my major complaint, we're doing pretty good. So I'm not really sure what happened to my sense of humor. Obviously it's evolved and changed over the past decade or so, which is obviously true because watching so many movies and experiencing different kinds of comedy and things like that, of course your personality and sense of humor is going to evolve just a little bit. So I'm happy to report that my not my personality, my sense of humor evolved with Anchorman. Now, also, I was laughing hysterically because this supporting cast is just so good. Obviously, Will Ferrell is the star of the movie. It's his film, absolutely. But I love Christina Applegate in this role because to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Will Ferrell, you have to have another, like, strong, dominant personality and I thought Christina Applegate was perfect casting for that because she held her own as an actress going up with Will Ferrell, but also the supporting cast of Paul Rudd and Steve Carell. Oh my gosh. I love both of them in this movie. They made me laugh every single time. Steve Carell, when he's on screen in this movie, is so hilarious every because he just says random stuff. He says random stuff that doesn't make any sense at all whatsoever. That I find hilarious. The overacting that Will Ferrell tends to do in the movie, like in the telephone booth and things like that, that I don't really care for. But like the Steve Carell kind of sense of humor, that's more my speed. I love it. I found that absolutely hilarious. So overall, my entire rewatch of Anchorman is positive absolutely positive. Now, when it comes to the 4K transfer, this looks nice. This looks very, very nice because the picture itself was crisp and clean and clear. And there's a lot of colors in this movie. The, the time period it takes place in, in the 70s, there was a lot of color going on back then. So those colors just really, was really bright and just very much enhanced by the 4K transfer. So you will not regret picking this up at all whatsoever, especially if 
you are a comedy fan, if you are a fan of Will Ferrell, if this is one of your favorite movies, then I would suggest absolutely pick this one up because you will want it for your physical media collection. So positive review for Anchorman. I'm so happy that I rewatched it and that it changed my mind. This is why it's very important to circle back to movies and re-experience them. Let a couple of years go by or 10, you know, whatever, and just re-experience something. Watch it again with a fresh set of eyes because you may change your mind. And that's what happened with me with Anchorman. So there you go. I'm not saying it's going to happen with every single Will Ferrell movie, but it happened with Anchorman. I'm happy to report. All right, let's just move on. Let's move on to... Purple Rain. Purple Rain came in from Warner Brothers. Finally. I'm not really sure what happened. I feel like my package got lost in the mail. So WB was very kind to send me another one. So thank you so much, Warner Brothers, for hooking me up with this. I mean, this is Prince. Prince was iconic. I mean, I wanted to watch. This was a first time watch for me, by the way. This is pure nostalgia. I grew up in the 80s and late... Er, strike that, 80s and early 90s, listening to Prince. I mean, I thought he was absolutely a musical genius. I still do, even though he's no longer with us. We won't even talk about that. My heart was destroyed when I heard about that. But anyway, for some reason, I had never seen Purple Rain. And I have to laugh a little bit because one of my friends in the community KB from KB Loves Movies. He is a fan of this movie as well. And he knew that this was a first time watch for me. And so he kind of like gave me a heads up that the entire film is pretty much just a long music video all about Prince. And I said, you know what? I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm fine with that because I like Prince and I like his music. So that's fine with me. And that's absolutely what this movie is. It's all about Prince. It is a long music video. I mean, it's not really, but it just, it seems like that. It seems like that because you have Prince, his character, he's called the kid. And he has his band that plays in this club and the club owner is like trying to, I think, trying to decide whether he wants to keep him on. And then Apollonia shows up and she kind of like distracts him a little bit. They start getting into a relationship and it's, it's like a whole thing. It's a whole thing, but this is not for everyone. I will say that this is definitely not going to be for everyone. I would say if this is nostalgia, if you absolutely loved Prince, if you listened to Prince on repeat in the 80s and 90s, you will definitely want Purple Rain. But now, if you're more, you know, if you were born with a two in front, probably not. I don't think so. Because you're not really, this is a very nostalgic film, you know, and I feel like this was made in just a special time period for, you know, a certain audience. And I feel like if your birth date starts with a two, you're really not going to appreciate this as much. Okay. You're, you'd probably appreciate it, but not as much as someone like myself, a little bit of the older generation, if you will. So it's, it's, it's an interesting movie. It's interesting. It's definitely, you got to be in a certain mood for it. I will say that but it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone, but I am recommending it. I am recommending if you are from, you know, this generation right here with a 19, <laughs> you know, then you'll definitely want to pick this one up. So I enjoyed, I enjoyed my first time watch of Purple Rain and it looked nice as well. Not like amazing blow my socks off 4k transfer, but it looked nice. It looked nice. So there we go. That was a positive review. That was positive. There was nothing negative there. Okay. So now we are moving over to a couple of Kino Lorber Blu-rays. Kino Lorber and I are slowly building a relationship with each other. So Kino Lorber sent over a couple of Blu-rays. So shout out to Kino Lorber for doing that. I really do appreciate it. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is called The Country Girl. Now, this is a very recent brand new release. This came out July 9th, so um, yesterday. <laughs> yesterday this came out. And this is a great black and white movie. 
with an amazing cast. As you can see, you have beautiful Grace Kelly right here on the front. You also have Bing Crosby and William Holden. And this movie is from 1954. So what's going on in this film is that we have William Holden, who is the director of a musical. And he's looking for a new leading man to take over because I think the previous one didn't work out or something like that. So he knows Bing Crosby's character from the past somehow. And he would like Bing Crosby's character to take over and be the new leading man. However, Bing Crosby kind of comes with a little bit of baggage, if you will. I'm not going to go into like a full on detail because then I'm going to get way too involved in talking about the movie. But Bing Crosby's got some baggage going on. And Grace Kelly plays his wife. And that's pretty much the the summary of, of what's going on. And I will say that throughout the movie as it as it goes, there's some lying and there's some truths revealed and things like that. And I'm going to stop there <laughs> because I don't want to reveal too much because I would like you guys to pick up this movie and experience it because it is a great film. And I was actually looking forward to watching this movie for the first time because this was the role that Grace Kelly won her Oscar for. Now, this was important because this was the year that she beat out Judy Garland in A Star is Born because everyone thought Judy Garland was going to be a shoe-in to win that Best Actress Oscar. And then it was a major upset when it was Grace Kelly for this movie. So now that I've seen both of those films, who should have won? Judy Garland. Nothing against Grace Kelly's performance. Grace Kelly was great in this movie. Don't get me wrong. But Judy Garland should have won. I know I'm kind of going off tangent a little bit. But I got to be honest, Judy Garland should have won absolutely hands down. But I'm happy that I finally watched this performance because I did want to compare the two and talk about that. And now that I've seen both, I can definitely say that Judy was robbed. The Academy made a little bit of a mistake, a little bit of a boo-boo, but that's okay. That happens sometimes. But I mean, still a great performance. I'm not saying that it's not a good performance. It is. It is. But Judy's was better. But I did really enjoy this movie. I did really enjoy this movie. I mean, this is such a powerhouse cast right here. And Bing Crosby is, you know, fantastic showing off his, you know, incredible singing ability as always. So this was a great watch. I really, really enjoyed it. And I do recommend that you guys pick this one up as well because it is good. I liked it. That was a great first time watch for me. And my face is getting all red because it's about 95 degrees here in Connecticut. It's a very hot day and I have no fan or AC on right now. So we got to make this quick. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to sit here and die if I don't get some AC going soon. All right. So that's the first Kino Wilbur title. The second is a Blu-ray called Kidnapped. Now this one was interesting that I've never heard before. This is based on a true story. And you guys know how I feel about true stories. I love true stories or biopics. And I found this one to be very, very interesting. This took place in the 1860s. Now this focuses in on a Jewish household that has many, many children. And one of their sons, without them knowing is baptized okay obviously that's a no-no okay like we don't do that if we are jewish we don't baptize so without them knowing one of their sons is baptized and this information is leaked to the catholic church and so therefore they come in and rip this six-year-old boy away from his family because now because he's been baptized he's going to be a part of the catholic church and completely abandon everything that he's been learning so far in a Jewish household. I mean, this is heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking that this is true. This is actually, this actually happened. And that is crazy. I had to keep reminding myself as I was watching it, that this is a true story. I mean, I can't even imagine how scared a little six-year-old boy was being ripped away from his family that obviously that's all he knows. And being, you know, brought to a completely different, you know, 
d completely different religion and having to accept all of this and be with people that he doesn't know who they are. His parents are fighting for him because they want, obviously they want him back and they want him, you know, to come back to their household and, you know, to be Jewish again. But this was like a very complicated movie, very emotional. Like you're taking an emotional roller coaster ride when you're watching this movie. And this is a foreign film. I was not aware of this. I, I did not know when I requested it that this was a foreign film. I probably just skipped over the information. But there are subtitles. So I had no problem reading it. Um, but yeah, it's just it's it just mind-boggling true story. Mind-boggling true story. I still cannot believe that this actually happened. And you're just going to have to see for yourselves how this movie ends up. Because I don't want to reveal it. So I really enjoyed Kidnapped as well. The performance of this little boy in the movie was so good. I thought he was so good because he wasn't like overly emotional where they kind of wanted him to be like his parents wanted him to kind of fight more, but he kind of just like accepted it, you know, like he was kind of just rolling with it and, and, and going with it. And I don't know, like he, great acting, great acting from this little boy right here. So kidnapped. I highly recommend this one to you as well. And I'm not big on, you know, religion or, you know, religious tales or anything like that. It's not like, it's not like a genre where I'm like, yes, I need to watch it. But that one surprised me, pleasantly surprised me. So I do recommend those as well. Okay. So now let's get back to more like commercial movies. All right. We've got Twister. Of course we have Twister, the 4K of Twister. I'm not going to go on and on about Twister because I mean, it's Twister. <laughs> it's such a great movie. If you have not seen Twister, what are we doing here? This is one of the best disaster films of all time. This is personally my favorite disaster movie of all time. I absolutely love it. This came out in what, 96? So I was like 16 at the time. Like, I thought their job in this movie was so freaking cool, chasing after tornadoes. I wanted to be Helen Hunt. I thought she was amazing. I looked up to her just a little bit. And I just love this movie. I think the ensemble cast is just so great. The eclecticness of all of them. And they're all so weird and wacky. And then you have Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton. And they're just so perfectly cast in the film. I love it. And the tornadoes. And the tornadoes and the whole story and the backstory of Helen Hunt's character. It's such a great movie. And re-watching this absolutely got me hyped up for the upcoming sequel that is very, very soon. Like right around the corner. I cannot wait to watch this. I think it's going to be a great time. It's getting great reviews, by the way. So I'm looking forward to Twisters. But the 4K transfer of this movie is fantastic. It's right up there with one of the best of the year so far. I've already said this in a couple of videos, but really quickly, like the disaster scenes look amazing. So much better than on the Blu-ray. And also the tornadoes themselves are more clearly defined. You can see the outline of the twisters better. So I definitely do highly recommend this 4K. If there's any 4K, if there's two 4Ks that you pick up this year, one of them should be Twister and the other one is Crimson Peak. Okay, because I think these, these two 4Ks are the best transfers so far of the year. Nice clean picture. Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton, you can see them very, very clearly. This looks great. Absolutely great. And plus there's a lot of bonus features on here as well. And even the director of the movie, oh, who is it? I always forget. It is Jan de Bont. When Jan de Bont is talking in one, one of the very first bonus features on here, when he's talking about the 4K, even he is very excited with how the final result came out. So if the director of the movie is talking about how good the 4K is, then I think we have a winner here. So Twister, gotta get it. Loved it. So much fun. Cannot wait for the sequel. I am so excited because... We just need a good disaster film on the big screen. I'm so excited for it. I'm so looking forward to it. All right. Two more movies to talk about. 
Abigail. Abigail is so much fun. I saw this movie at the theater and I highly enjoyed it. I'm a sucker, no pun intended. I'm a sucker for vampire movies. I absolutely love them. Any kind of vampire film. We've seen teenage vampires. We've seen ancient old vampires. And now we have a vampire ballerina. <laughs> okay, we have vampire ballerina. And this is such a fun fun, gory, bloody, good time. You have a great ensemble cast yet again. You have Melissa Barrera and Dan Stevens and Catherine Newton. There's a lot of comedy infused in the movie as well, in particular with Catherine Newton's character. She kind of steals the movie for me just a little bit. She kind of is like grabs your attention a little bit more than Melissa Barrera in the scenes that they're both in together. I kind of look at Catherine Newton a little bit more than Melissa Barrera. I do have to be honest. But I think Catherine Newton in this movie is just so good. She shines. She's great. She has a dancing scene in this movie. She's fantastic. Absolutely great. But overall, it's just fun. It's just a fun movie. And that really says something about Radio Silence, the directors that directed this movie. I think with all of their films so far that I've seen, I think they've only done the four movies, Ready or Not, Scream 5 and 6, and then Abigail. With all of their movies, they're all fun. They're all a good time. And I think that's just a recurring theme that these directors just want to keep doing because they know who their audience is and they want their audience to just have a fun experience, not take it too seriously, and just, you know, walk out of the theater wanting the physical media. I don't know. Like, it's just, it's just a fun, good time. And I just like the different direction that this movie takes. And this little girl right here who plays Abigail, she is so good. She is incredible, absolutely amazing. There's a lot of bonus features on here. There is deleted and extended scenes, the gag reel, becoming a ballerina vampire. They focus all on her for an entire segment, feature commentary. There's a lot of great stuff on here. So Abigail, you need this. You absolutely need this, especially if you love vampire films, then this definitely should be on your pickup list. All right. I'm just being positive about all these movies. They're all great. All right, finally ending with the 4k of civil war. I just picked this up yesterday and last night, the entire family watched this together. Now I hate to say, you know, you have a good time watching a movie like this because this is a very powerful, serious film about a modern day civil war. Like it kind of makes you, this movie makes you think it really does make you think some movies. I like to go to the theater and just not think just have big, dumb fun, like twister, or Abigail, you know, movies like that, they're not serious. You know, you're just there for the, you know, for the popcorn, for the ride, and that's it. But then you have movies like Civil War that are powerful, that are strong, that really make you think about the current environment that we live in and the pos. you know, this is, you know, a very drastic possibility of what, you know, could, may happen in the future. I don't know. I don't want to get too serious, but... I feel like, and I'm not trying to get political. I don't want to get political at all here on the channel. I keep it light. I keep it light and fresh. But I think with society that we are living in today, as a country, we are so divided. And I feel like right now this movie is so relevant because of that fact. We are just so divided right now. And we are trying to figure out what is best for our country. Which direction do we go in? It's just really kind of scary. It's kind of scary because what if this happens? You know, what if, what if, what if this happens? As I said before, when I was talking about this movie, never say never. Okay. Never look at something and say, oh, that can never happen. You don't know. You don't know. I mean, did we predict previous wars, civil war, world war one, you know, like things happen, things escalate and things happen. And so that's why I say never say never. So watching this film and just feeling it and kind of just like laying in the moment of the movie and you're, you're just intaking everything that's going on, it's kind of scary and eye-opening. 
but it also makes you think. And I appreciate movies that are like this because it, we need them. We need them every once in a while to kind of ground us just a little bit. I feel like I'm making nonsense right now. <laughs> Am I making nonsense? Am I making sense? I hope so. I hope my point is coming across. But this is one of my favorite movies of the year so far because of how relevant it is and also how much it just makes you think as a country, as people, and how we just... Hopefully it doesn't come to it. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully it does not get as drastic as this movie Civil War. But as far as... I hope that made sense. I really, really do. I hope you guys... Because as I said, I'm not political. I don't want to be political here on the channel. But I can't not address it. You know what I'm saying? Because it is relevant to the movie. So let's just talk about performances. Okay. Best performance hands down in the movie is Kirsten Dunst. Kirsten Dunst's performance is very powerful in this film. It's also very subtle. And that's what's so good about it is, I mean, Kirsten Dunst has been in Hollywood for so many years now, and she's just so good in this role because she plays a war photographer who is just beaten down. She's pretty much seen everything. And this is an event that's scaring everyone. And she's trying to remain calm throughout the entire movie. But you can tell it's really starting to eat at her and starting to get to her. And she just delivers an amazing performance. I'm personally hoping that she gets nominated during award season this year because there's just not a lot of notable performances yet. Maybe we're going to get a slew at the end of the year. I'm not really sure. But I hope they remember Kirsten Dunst's, Kirsten Dunst, there we go, performance in Civil War because she really delivers one of the best of the year and I enjoyed the entire cast. A lot of people were saying that, what's her name? Kaylee Spaney, the younger photographer. She was annoying because she was getting in the way, but that's, that's her character. You know, like the age of her character, she's, she's young, she's dumb, she's ambitious. You know, she wants to get out there and get in it, even though she shouldn't, you know, People out there are like that. I mean, that's just realistic. So I just enjoyed all the performances. Really enjoy this movie. So I do recommend, there we go. I do, I do recommend that you do pick this up. And this is the 4K and it looks fantastic. It looked really great. All right, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I was long winded with Civil War, but I hope you understood everything that I was trying to say about it. So those are my thoughts about all of the most recent brand new releases. Comment down below and let me know which one of these are your personal favorites. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave and I'll see you next time.